This car differs from other cars in many features. One point eight five million dollars. Welcome back to Preston Tucker's Speed Shop. Today we're here at the AACA Museum in Hershey, Pennsylvania. This is the site of the 75th anniversary celebration of Tucker on June 16th, 2023. I'll tell you a little bit more about that later in the video. Today we're going to focus on this car right here, which is Tucker number 26. Now what makes this car unique? This car is one of two original Tuckers that were delivered with Preston Tucker's own automatic transmission, designed by a gentleman named Warren Rice but uh, not, not finalized as far as, as uh, design is concerned. So only two cars had it, and this is one of them. Uh, this car was originally painted royal maroon like the car you see back over there, number one. The reason it's not its original color is because Mr. Kamek, who owned all three of these cars, had a red one. So when he had this restored, he decided to paint it, uh, you know, what, what his version of, of his favorite Tucker color was, which is, was this nice copper color here. Now. This car being number 26 is the middle of the production run for Tucker. Now, now what that means is there was a lot of changes made during the production of this car. Um, big things such as the gas tank was moved from the back of the car to the front of the car. So this is the first one that had a front gas tank. Um, and then a lot of little stuff like knobs and handles and things. And one thing that is unique only to this car, and we were able to find this with some original company blueprints are these door handles. Now I'm going to have you look at Tucker number 22 here before we look at Tucker number 26. These door handles are what Tucker wanted to use or, or I guess his original thought uh, for Tucker. These actually happen to be Kaiser door handles. They're rear door handles because you see they don't have a lock so they used four rears and you see when I touch this you hear this rattle right? So when they were doing the Indy testing, uh, so they had seven cars that Tucker tested at Indy for durability. They noted this, this rattling and they had another door handle design on one unique car and that car was Tucker number 26. So you can see these door handles here um, are push button, they're much more solid. And uh, in the notes of that, that uh, report there, they, they liked these door handles better. They made less noise, they seemed more durable, so these were the door handles that they were going to use, uh, most likely. We can't say for sure, but uh, certainly they function well and uh, have a lot less rattle, which was the big complaint about the, the Kaiser door handles. Uh, we're gonna go back to the back of the car. I'm gonna have uh, a nice pan shot around while I come around this way, so you get a good look at Tucker number 26. So as I said uh, in my intro there, this was one of the two cars that was delivered with a Tuckermatic automatic transmission. I've got a light back in here that you'll see in a moment, but uh, this car had a unique cross member in the back, so you can tell which cars had an automatic. And you can't see it very well back there, but that is the Tuckermatic transmission. Um, so very few moving parts. I believe it was 27 moving parts. This, this was the idea of Preston Tucker, but it was designed by Warren Rice, who was one of his engineers. They had three versions of this transmission, the R1, the R2, and the R3. As far as we can tell from our research, this one is R1-2, so it's the second version of the R1. We don't believe they ever made any R2s or R3s. Both cars that had the transmission, number 26, which is this car, and number 42, which was unfortunately destroyed, both had the R1-2. Now, we have a special treat here because David Kamek, who was the one that donated all this great Tucker memorabilia to the AACA, salvaged the drivetrain out of Tucker number 42. So even though that car doesn't exist anymore, we have the drivetrain. So we're going to take a look at it here in a minute. Now. Uh, I, d I told you a little bit earlier that I wanted to talk about the Tucker 75th anniversary. So June uh, 16th through the 18th is when that event is going to take place. Not only are these three cars and all the memorabilia that you see here going to be there, but eight total original Tucker. So these three plus five others. So it's going to be a really, really unique treat, especially on the East Coast, to see this many Tuckers all in one spot. 
So if you want to get your tickets, like I said, go to aacamuseum.org. Um, you, can, you can sign up for the whole weekend or there will also be individual days that you can buy uh, just to see the eight tuckers here on display. So we walked by tucker number 22, which was the silver one, tucker number one. Uh, we'll talk about those in a later video. This is the tucker test chassis. Uh, we did a video on this previously. It's got the huge original 589 motor that Preston Tucker originally wanted to use in the car. Uh, but what I want to point you to is this right here. So this drivetrain came out of Tucker number 42. And you can see here, this is the Tuckermatic automatic transmission on the back. Torque converter on both sides. So there's a torque converter here, as well as a torque converter here, which wasn't necessarily the greatest idea for safety. Um, this one actually spins kind of right behind you, behind the rear seat. So a little bit dangerous, but certainly something they probably would have addressed at some point. Um, that engine, uh, I, don't, I don't recall which number this is, but we have verified that this engine did come out of Tucker number 18. And, and thank, thank goodness for people like Dave, who back in the day, um, you know, this, this happened in the 70s, had the forethought to save things like this, right? There's only 98 Tuckers in existence. And, uh, you know, if this engine hadn't been saved by Dave, it'd probably be gone. So just a, a little bit as, as a comparison. So this is the, the Tucker Matic. Oh, and this, this one here, you can see, uh, has the, the torque converter. The rest of the transmission isn't there, but this is the R1 torque converter here on the back of this engine. Um, now to compare to the Tucker transmission, um, this here is the drivetrain from Tucker number 18. So also one of the Tuckers that did not exist or does not exist today. It was destroyed many, many years ago. This is the Tucker Y1 transmission. A lot of people think that Tucker used a cord transmission. Now, many Tuckers do have cord transmissions because they didn't get enough of these Y1s made, but this Y1 transmission was, was Tucker specific. Looks very similar to the cord, but there are no parts that interchange between those two transmissions. So you can see here, it's got the um, um, basically hydraulic and uh, electric uh, shifter mechanism that would pre-select on the uh, the side of the dash there and then uh, you know basically kind of shift itself so it was another early version of not necessarily an automatic but more of a, an automatic shifted uh, uh, manual transmission so pretty neat piece and like I said we'll take a look at one other transmission combination here this is the Tucker test chassis and the monster 589 cubic inch flat six that Preston Tucker was working on you'll notice here and I'm going to point to him there's a torque converter on either side of this engine and no transmission. So the idea was to drastically reduce the number of moving parts and, and have no transmission at all. Now, that created several other issues, namely, how do you back this thing up? So that myth about press Tucker's not backing up is true, and it came from this. They were trying all kinds of wacky things like, like uh, running the engine in reverse and things like that to get the car to back up, but ultimately abandoned this design for the ones that we looked at earlier. So uh, with that, I want to wrap up today and uh oh hey hey just we're okay. well, this is my uh this is my son here this is hudson tucker's he's preston tucker's great great grandson so have, helping us here at the aca uh and and i do want to one more time mention the 75th anniversary celebration that's taking place here june 16th through the 18th make sure you get your tickets at aacamuseum.org and with that uh, thank you for watching and we'll catch you next time